Barbara. I'm Cheryl. And I'm Naima. We're Three Black Moms. This is Black History Month. African American History Month. Why is it that our story always starts out with slavery? I mean, it's great. You know, we get the good stories about Harriet Tubman and and Dr. Martin Luther King and and Rosa Parks and Frederick Douglass and Sojourner Truth and you know, I mean, it's nice that we have this great story of how we fought for our freedom and liberation and justice and equality. I mean, it's wonderful. Every year we study those what same five people, uh, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks. And every now and then they might throw in maybe a, a, a but George Washington Carver, you know, peanut man, got to remember that. But for our children, having a real healthy sense of who they are and all that they represent, this is very, very limiting. Why is it that we are stuck on the slave experience as the definition of who we are when Black people have produced 10,000 years and more of recorded history of achievements. We're stuck on those last 300 years. It weren't very pleasant, but that's not who we are. And that's not all we have been. And if we really wanna get out of victim mode and teach real history, we need to expand far beyond that slave experience and we need to make our children feel empowered. And that means defining them not by an unfortunate 300 year experience of oppression. And every group has had one at some point in their lives. We need to make them feel empowered and define them not by what someone did to them, but all the great things that they have descended from the great achievers beyond the slave experience so that they can see who they are as fantastic human beings. And no one has the power to define or confine them. So sisters, what do you think? Is it time for us to come up with a more empowering view of black history? Well, I thought I'd seen everything. Until I saw this book, I mean, everything about dummies. Black American history for dummies. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it has everything in here. The long road to freedom, the civil rights movement and beyond, and Black culture in America. This is a great book for people who are extremely ignorant and know next to nothing, and even for those who know something. But let me ask you a question, sisters. What if there were no Black people? I read a story about a little boy named Theo who woke up one morning and asked his mom, Mom, what if there were no Black people? Throughout this talk, I would like to read some parts from this story, and I'll start with this. His mom, when her son asked her, Mom, what if there were no Black people? She thought about it for a moment and said, well, come with me and let's see. Follow me around and we'll see what it would be like if there were no black people. Well, Theo ran to his room, put on his clothes and shoes, but there were no shoes and the clothes were all wrinkled. He looked for the iron, but when he reached for the ironing board, it was no longer there. Because you see, Sarah Boone, a black woman, invented the ironing board and Jan E. Matzlinger, a black man, invented the shoe lasting machine. Oh, well, his mom said, go and do your hair. Theo ran to his room to get his comb, but the comb was not there because you see Walter Sammons, a black man, invented the comb. Theo decided just to brush his hair, but the brush was gone. 
Because <laughs> you see, Lydia O. Newman, a black female, had invented the brush. Well, he was a sight. No shoot, wrinkled clothes, hair mess without hair. Inventions of uh, Madam C. Walker, Madam C. J. Walker. Well, you get the picture. And his mom told Theo, let's do some chores around the house and then take a trip to the grocery store. Well, there was his Theo's job was to sweep the floor and he swept and swept. And when he reached for the dustpan, it was not there. Because you see, Lloyd P. Ray, a black man, invented the dustpan. So he swept his pile of dirt over in the corner and left it there. And then he decided to mop the floor, but the mop was gone. Because you see, Thomas W. Stewart, a black man, invented the mop. Theo talked to himself, I'm not having any luck. And his mom said, we should wash the clothes and prepare a list for the grocery store. And when he was finished, Theo went to place his clothes in the dryer. But it wasn't there because you see, George T. Salmon, a black man, invented the clothes dryer. Theo got a pencil and some paper to prepare the list for the market. But he noticed that the pencil lead was broken as well. He was out of luck because John Love, a black man, invented the pencil sharpener. He reached for a pen, but it was not there because William Purvis, a black man, invented the fountain pen. As a matter of fact, Lee Burridge invented the typewriting machine and W.A. Lavitt, the printing press. So they decided to head out to the market. Well, when Theo opened the door, he noticed the grass as high as he was tall. You see, the lawnmower was invented by John Burr, a black man. They made their way to the car and found that it wouldn't go. You see, Robert Spikes, a black man, invented the automatic gear shift, and Joseph Gamble invented the supercharged system for the internal combustion engines. They noticed that the few cars that were moving were running into each other and having wrecks because there were no traffic signals. You see, Garrett A. Morgan, a black man invented the traffic light. Well, it was getting late, so they walked to the market, got their groceries, and returned home. And just when they were about to put away the milk, butter, and eggs, they noticed the refrigerator was gone. You see, John Standard, a black man, invented the refrigerator, so they put the food on the counter. By this time, they noticed it was getting mighty cold. Theo went to turn up the heat, and what do you know? It was not there. You see, Aleph Parker, a black female, invented the heating furnace. And even in the summertime, they would have been out of luck because Frederick Jones, a black man, invented the air conditioner. It was almost time for Theo's father to arrive home, and he usually took the bus. But there was no bus because the precursor was the electric trolley. And that was invented by another black man, Albert T. Robinson. He usually took the elevator from his office on the 20th floor, but there was no elevator because Alexander Miles, a black man, invented the elevator. And he usually dropped off the office mail at the nearby mailbox, but it was no longer there because Philip Downing, a black man, invented the letter drop mailbox and William Berry invented the postmarking and canceling machine. Theo sat at the kitchen table with his head in his hands. When his father arrived, he said, why are y'all sitting in the dark? Why? Because Lewis Howard Latimer, a black man, invented the filament within the light bulb. Theo quickly learned what it would be like if there were no black people in the world. <laughs> Not to mention that if he were sick and needed blood, Charles Drew, a black scientist, found a way to preserve and store blood, which led to the starting of the world's first blood bank. And what if a family member need to have heart surgery? This would not have been possible without Dr. Daniel Hale Williams, a black doctor who performed the first open heart surgery. So if you ever wonder like Theo, what the world would be like without black people, well, it's pretty plain to see we would still be in the dark.
<laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> that is. That is. Not only that, and that doesn't even go. And to, I just scratch the surface. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't even start with the cultural things. There would be no jazz music. There would be no tap dance. <laughs> like, all of these things. There would be no hip hop, but there'd be no Motown. Little... Yeah, <laughs> no Motown. <laughs> but there was a lot, a lot <laughs> more art and and literature and all of the other contributions that we have. And Naima, you had said something about, you know, because we had talked about this beforehand about those same five people that we yeah, those same five people. You know, and it's and they're they're great for five people, but there's more of us, obviously, that Barbara mm -hmm. had just said. And the thing is is that and that is just in our history here. I yeah. mean, when we talk about AP European history and all this yeah. other stuff, and then they don't want to talk about AP African American history. Okay, well, let's go back to the motherland and all the kings and queens that we grew up, that we came from. The, we are descended from, from royalty in not the European sense, but in the real sense. Oh, yeah. And we need to stop teaching our children that they can be as good as right and and they've been better. That, no you're already good enough yeah and you're already smart enough and wonderful enough just because you exist and where you came from not only who you are but whose you are yes that's that's where we have to begin our teaching of children not that they have to measure up to somebody else's standards they have already exceeded those standards and beyond you got you got an amen from somebody here barbara uh, mama bonfire says yes yes yes, <laughs> yes. well Thank you know you. i teach school and i remember uh you know a few years back when it was african-american uh history month and i taught my students the black national anthem i played it every day my kids actually learned all the words and i had a racially mixed ethnically mixed class and it was really fun to have a class like that and then share all these things, show different movies every other day of a famous African-Americans. But I had one student once who was kind of upset and said, well, why do y'all get a month? Why Why is there <laughs> no, a black, a black a I'm in the South, yeah, how they talk, you know, and 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 Because you, you all get the other 11. <laughs> well, and not only that, African-American history, if it had been taught right, it would have been weaved throughout the entire year like everybody else. All these yeah. things that I named, uh, I did not know about any of these people when I was a child growing up. You know, we were like relegated to the story of Little Black Sambo running around a tree and a bunch of tigers turning into butter. And as a matter of fact, Little Black Sambo is not even African-American. He was Indian. Oh, well, yeah, because they changed it. But this yeah, I, I don't even. I think they. I think they got rid of it by the time I got to school because I, I never. I never. Yeah, heard we. Of school. I never heard that. But this is the thing that's funny is that we actually some of these things were already we knew. I mean, I think a black man also invented ice cream, and there's all other things. But we had a book. I think it was like famous Negroes or Negroes in history. Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah. We did. You remember that? My professor yeah, right. wrote that book. Yes, yeah, and you know, gave so us crazy. that book when we were kids because I yeah. remember, I, yeah, got, I remember learning too. who Martin Luther King was when I was five years old. Yeah, Mama was saying that he was the first Negro to win the Nobel Peace Prize, and yes. I didn't understand any of those words, but I understood the pride that came important. with that. Yeah, and I also because I also remember I can always spell encyclopedia because she taught me how to spell that at the same time. So, <laughs> or, or at least that's what I have in my head. So there have always been the books. There have always been these uh, uh, resources for us and for our children. And we need to, you know, as parents of, of, chill, of Black children, we need to make sure that they know that. I think I got Sarah the updated version of that book. She was never much of a reader. But I got her a, 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 an updated version of that same book because she was growing up when she was in elementary school. She was one of either one or only one or two black children. And she's class. biracial. So, you know, so so she 
did not have the same uh, sense of pride and the same sense of belonging that a lot of children in majority Black uh, uh, spaces have. And so I made sure that she had that. I made sure that her hair looked ethnically like mine. And you know what was <laughs> funny? Because they wanted her hair. When she, I remember when, when we had talked about this before, when she wanted her hair straightened and um, so she could look like normal. And I had it done, of course, you know, after you all talked me off the ledge. Um, <laughs> I go wrong? <laughs> because she had always had, she had twists, she had braids, she had French braids, she had beads. I want to make sure, I don't care how, how light skinned she was. I want to make sure that people knew that she belonged to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the thing is, is that I did all kind of creative things with her hair. And once she had it straightened, she realized, you know what? This is just different. It's not better. Yeah. Not only that, yeah. is that when I did her hair with beads, with, with um, names on it, and I put all her friends' names. You are so her, creative. Her and you know I what? Know. They would gather around her and they want to find their names in her hair. Oh, that is you so know? And And I even had and some of them, they loved her hair. And I remember she's the only black kid. They loved her hair so much. I actually had the white moms over and did a hair braiding party. Oh, that them. is so, so fun. I made sure that she knew whose she belonged. Yes, she and it was brought. something great. And like, that's take pride in that. Take pride in who yes. she was. Yeah, yeah. And that, so. that is so critical that the message that we give to our children is not a comparison of other people. We'll try to be as good as them. No, you are fantastic because of who you are. Yes. And we have yes. to give them a view of themselves that is beyond the narrow scope that, that other people define them by. Some words never use. I don't care if you only want, never call yourself a minority. I don't care if you're- We no, are. We are global the global majority. majority, so- We are the global majority. Yes. People just, of color are in the global majority. We are not, people started saying, well, somebody is a, uh, we're going, this, this town is a, a majority minority. I know, and then and that, that, that's confusing. I don't know what's the matter with you. That that still is white centering. Yes. Yeah. They're, 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 if they're you're the majority, centering. how are you the minority? Yes. Yeah. So we have to be conscious of not imitating other people's perspective on who we are, and making sure our children see themselves as the global majority they are. If you're looking numerically, but ultimately, like yeah, you were saying, Robert. Well, you know, if we had been taught things properly it would have been all interwoven into all human history and that's yeah. that's where the goal is yes. where everybody can just be who they are and from wherever your ancestors came from they all did great things and that means us taking us seizing the power to define yeah us writing the books us producing the films us telling the story from the perspective that we wanted told and not from other people's perspective Right. I remember, uh, what was that? Um, well, one of the things that comes out in Hollywood, every time you know somebody wants to tell a, a, a Black story, they get a bit of resistance unless they can find a way to tell it from a white person's point of view. Uh, I was listening to um, the star of the movie, uh, and I see all of the names have just left my head. So I'll just move on to something else. <laughs> <laughs> getting old, you're getting old. Yes, yes. Was it Crash? Uh, no, what was the movie about the, the Woman King? What's the her name? King. Viola Davis. Yeah, yes. Viola Davis. Uh, she was doing an interview about the challenges in making that movie and realizing that how they look at it is well you know how 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 is the story you know important to white men because that's that's supposed to be like the standard even yeah. though it's a fantastic story of heroism and all this great stuff and we know we love it but you know somehow it's it's got to sort of focus on them but it, i mean it's a great movie and everybody loved it and she was powerful yeah. i hope she wins the oscars and everything else 
but that that's kind of what happens in that industry. So even that we have, I'm so glad Tyler Perry created a, a, a studio where, you know, where you can do all kinds of films and, and just tell our story the way we want to tell it. Right. Because it has to be from our perspective. And there was this other story. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Well, the, the, the character, of course, um, he was the one who the, 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 the people were kidnapped. Amistad. Three people. Amistad. There you go. Oh yeah. I remember. Yes. And and when that movie was made, again, you know, it was a great film, but the way they had to sort of tell it was from the point of view of the white lawyer that well, that well free, instead of from the the point of view of those who over who overthrew the ship and you know were going to try to sail back. Well, this is the thing, and I, I've got, you know, which reminds me, that's a great segue for what I was thinking about, who are, you know, two of my hearts who've gone on to glory are Siskel and Ebert. Mm. And, you know, and of course, we're all native Chicagoans, so we grew up and, yeah. you know, we watched that, and if yeah, you want to go on yeah. YouTube. But there was, there was something interesting that they both realized, and they were very, very much progressive for their time. When the movie Glory came out, mm -hmm. when, you know, when they talked about how Matthew Broderick was the star, and of course Denzel and all these other people, the and they were talking actor. about this uh, black regiment mm -hmm. that went up during yes. during the Civil War, and the one thing that I remember I took away from that uh, review that they had of this story was that they wished that they had centered more of the story on the enslaved men yes. who, who, who uh, made up this regiment because the movie centered on Matthew Broderick, who was leading this group of men. And they, mm -hmm. they even knew way back then, what was that, 20 some years ago? Yeah. yeah. That easily that that should have been the center that their stories were probably right. more interesting, many more pop, much more powerful, and, and much more is. powerful. And this is the thing is that what we are learning as we get more, and I'm going to use that Republican word that they hate, they hate is woke, but we're more woke <laughs> because we're more enlightened and yeah. we're more aware, yeah. and you know, so and and we are. So, so the more that we know, the more we realize that everything doesn't have to be told from a white, from white view, perspective. From, right. from this perspective, oh, how how we are perceived. How this, yeah, how does it affect you know, me? Actually, have our own stories. We yeah. have our own history. We have our own uh, uh, psyche that doesn't include them. Yes, yes. What's scary is that it does not include them. I, you know, granted, you know, I live in a, a, a I'm, I'm in an interracial uh, relationship, but my biracial daughter would tell you, this is a black household. <laughs> <laughs> we, we use, yeah, like, Cheryl, you too. use the word relationship like y'all dating. How, how many years you been married? Uh, it will be 26 years. 20, 26 yeah. years. You married y'all. Yeah. I'm in well, a relationship. But I'm married. <laughs> the thing is, is that you know? But he married a black woman. He did not marry a chocolate covered white woman. Yeah, and he, knew that, yeah. he knew that coming in. I had yeah. dreadlocks when we started dating. Yeah, you, so, so you know. So, kind of, yeah. and I've never felt <laughs> that anything had to be white centered for him. Yeah. And he and he gets that because what his life was is different from what my our life was. Yeah. But, Different you know, experience, different American yeah, experience. But, but we're yeah. still, you yeah, know, we're common that's here that's also. Uh, yeah. from Soul Purpose Healing, our sister Viata, who's down there in the uh, my neck of the woods. Well, actually, yeah, she's Florida. on vacation out in the in the islands. Oh, uh, well, this, she, love this perspective, right? Queens. Yes, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so this is there. the thing is that we have to realize that our history and black history in this country is American history. It and that's American what we history. don't understand. That is what is not being understood by people who are afraid, is that indigenous people's history in this it's country American history. is American history. Asian American people's history, the railroad and other things, that's American history. This is all our, uh, this is all of our all American history. 
Yeah. So we want to talk about, about, if we want to talk about American history, we need to tell everybody's history. And everybody's exactly history. It's about everything invented. As a matter of fact, there is a book called Everything Was Invented by Black People. There's a book called. <laughs> that <we're talking> about. <laughs> But, but you know, the, as far as this country, pretty much almost everything, because we were the one doing all the work. That's how come we kept coming up with the inventions. Which is, which is why it's interesting to me that every time, and I'm going to say this, this is wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway. Every time I hear about someone like some of these old races talk about lazy black people, says, mm -hmm. you know what? We are not the ones who stole a whole group of folks to come over and we do the work that they didn't want to do. Like yeah. just like when they talk about oh build a wall and all this other kind of stuff, you because don't the see, immigrants are taking their job. The no, they they their job. When they had that crazy. raid on that chicken plant or whatever it was a, a couple of years ago, you didn't see all these white people standing around waiting for getting those jobs the next day. No, <laughs> you know you don't see these people. You know when when they start talk about closing the borders and not hard, you see those things. You see those uh uh fruits and vegetables rotting in the fields because you don't see these white people out here, you know, grabbing that. Nobody, you know, nobody's, nobody's taking your job. That. We There is enough for all of us. And yeah. I'm not just talking about low paying job for immigrants because they also have the, uh, the wherewithal and mm -hmm. the, and the, and the uh, intelligence to strive in and invent and, and make things better. I mean, you know, Eli yeah. Whitney and the cotton gin and, and George Washington Carver and all of these things that can, were were born out of uh, necessity for those who are on this lower social economic level to thrive. But so I think is that these are immigrants are the people who are coming over here for an opportunity. We are the people who were brought over here on stolen land, and now we should be given the opportunity, and we need to educate our children and say, yes, we had adversity, but we come from much stronger stuff than yeah. just- we wouldn't have made it. Oh, we wouldn't yes. have made it. And, and there's another it. reality also, what were we doing before we got here? And you're talking yeah. about thousands and thousands and thousands of years of teaching the world science, technology and every language. other art language skills so building that, pyramids <laughs> absolutely building and pyramids because, it's, because, because people people the science that figure out, listen because people couldn't figure out how it was done they decided aliens did it because they didn't want to say the black people you know it. <laughs> well you know so they said oh the aliens came down and did it because no no we just know how to do stuff <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, speaking about that movie Glory, I was also remembering Carter's Army, another one that was a true story that they made a mo movie out of. Yep. Where, that was like uh, in the 70s, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I remember that. I remember seeing it before I, I had children. So it was definitely I remember one of those that. older ones. Yeah. yeah. And, yes, and, you know, exactly. and I think when we started talking about American history, all those things that Barbara read, now that's that's really the American history book that we want to teach American history because that's who really did all these things that made this, we want to make America great again? Okay, that's all That's all the things that black people did. That's what made America great. So yes, that's what exactly. every school child- We already did. made America great. We already made America great. So I think when it comes to teaching our history, our children should never be made to feel like they are the Inferior. victims of someone else's opinion of them. They should be empowered and they should see themselves as part of a global family of humanity coming from greatness and continuing greatness, overcoming adversity to continue their greatness. And that's the perspective that we need to give them. So we need to be telling the story. Yeah. Yes. Well, we got to go, you all. Thanks so much. Enjoy your Black History Month celebrations. And just remember all those things that you do every day. You couldn't do it if it wasn't for a Black person. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Three Black Moms. Until next week, I'm Naima. I'm Cheryl. I'm Barbara. Happy Black History Month.
Enjoy all those great things. Bye. Barbara. I'm Cheryl. And I'm Naima. We're three black moms.